Today is a special episode where you get to meet a new composer joining the Music Factory team. Even when I was just starting out, though my songs were not really that special. Just a simple chord progression. And listen to his latest music that you get to use for free, Freedom Family. Music Factory is 100% safe to use in your videos and live streams, even if you leave Freedom, because we own the music outright. So there's no chance of copyright strikes or monetiza monetization issues if you use music from the Music Factory. Where do you get it? Download music by clicking the link below for Music Factory and Video Factory, which contains video assets like Transitions free for you. Here are a few highlights from the interview. Roll it! I was mostly fascinated with big orchestras with big matching choirs, really heavy epic songs, trailer music and all that stuff. The way they integrated Lord of the Rings-like story into their albums pretty much gave me this nagging desire. Grand orchestra with a massive choir singing in Latin accompanied by a loud, heavy metal band singing about dragons, wizards, magic, epic battles that really stuck to me. It was all awesome and I badly wanted to do the same like holy crap. Man, so epic. <laughs> Unfortunately though, I was very, very limited in terms of software, hardware. Are you excited to hear the full music and see the full interview? I am. Take it away, Ben. Hello everyone, I am Benjamin, music composer and coordinator at Freedom. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Behind the Music, and today we're going to be featuring a composer who joined us recently and submitted a track called Seraphim Machine. First, we're going to go ahead and play the track, and afterwards, we'll have an interview with the composer. I hope all of you enjoy, and without further ado, I present to you Seraphim Machine. <laughs> So that was Seraphim Machine by the author-composer Stringstorm. And we're going to have a quick interview with him. We're going to ask him a few questions for your benefit, Freedom Family. I think you might be interested to hear a little bit about him. 
So first off, uh, String Storm, what is your background as a composer? I started dabbling on music back in 2006. I was mostly fascinated with big orchestras with big matching choirs, really heavy epic songs, trailer music and all that stuff. Even though I lacked musical knowledge, like I'm not really well versed in terms of music theory, chord progressions and all that, I'm basically musically illiterate, I was able to get a few work for some games back then, even when I was just starting out, though my songs were not really that special. Just a simple chord progression, a simple melody to accompany it, rendered with some free sound fonts and VSTs of the time. Come 2007 though, I stopped because I went into seminary, which lasted for three, three and a half years until I got booted out because of having seizures. As soon as I got out, I immediately enrolled myself in another seminary, which lasted for a year, a year and a half, and I was subsequently booted out for the same reason. I then just focused on my studies until I graduated from college. During those times, I resumed doing music, got some jobs out of it, still haven't studied music, until I am where I am right now. What inspired you to become a composer? It was because of a symphonic metal band called Rhapsody of Fire, formerly called Rhapsody back then. The way they integrated Lord of the Rings-like story into their albums pretty much gave me this nagging desire to do the same. I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. I could do this. Yeah, let's make our own album. <laughs> Easier said than done though. There's something about a grand orchestra with a massive choir singing in Latin accompanied by a loud, heavy metal band singing about dragons, wizards, magic, epic battles that really stuck to me. It was just, my mind was all, uh, and then they got Christopher Lee working with them. Oh, it was all awesome. And I badly wanted to do the same like, holy crap. Man, so epic. <laughs> Unfortunately though, I was very, very limited in terms of software, hardware, and well, experience to be able to actually do that, so... I wasn't able to do that until five years ago or something. Who is your compositional hero? It'd be probably be the guys from Rhapsody of Fire. I mean, just listen to one of their songs and you'll see why I adore them so much. For example, one of my many favorites from them is The Wizard's Last Rhyme. Reason being is that they incorporated Dvorak's, I'm probably butchering his name, New World Symphony and added their own twist to it. A massive choir, power metal, and lyrics that'll spark up the imagination of fantastical settings. Uh, just look it up right now. It's... it's just amazing. And I highly, highly, highly recommend them if you're looking for a new band to listen to. With that in mind, can you tell us what inspired your piece of music, the Seraphim Machine song we just listened to? It may sound lackluster, but I basically just looked up pictures, wallpapers about something related to the title of the song. So we have Seraphim Machine. Seraphim means angel and machine means, well, machine. So with those two in mind, we basically can think of a cyborg angel sort of thing. And that's basically what I looked up. Wallpapers of robot looking angels. That's it. <laughs> There's no complex thought process, no examination of inspirations. I literally just looked up some wallpapers and I was like, ooh, that's awesome. And an urge to make a song out of that just clicked inside me. Next thing I knew, I had made a song about it. With that in mind, the process of composition was simple. Angels are grand majestic beings. What better way to showcase angels as grand majestic beings of untold unrivaled power than really, really, really heavy percussions? And them being cyborgs and all, I just went with <laughs> techno-sounding synthesizers. 
I like to keep my songs simple like that. Then I just threw in a really really subtle string section in there just to fill any gaps the song might have. That, that That's pretty much it. What other types of projects have you worked on? I would gladly put out a long list, but I'd have to spend an equally long, long time trying to differentiate which ones are clear of NDA or are still under NDA. Suffice to say, film, video game, audio dramas, podcasts, and other formats of media I've probably done. I'm building up a website mainly for my songs, and I'll list all of the stuff I've worked on there. But for now, just to be safe rather than be sorry, I'll have to keep my lips sealed. Well, that was a great interview, and I thank you for coming today. Uh, but I'd like to ask you one more thing. What else would you like to tell us today? Other than music production, I also specialize in voice acting. I mainly do trailer voices and commercials, often antagonists because of my deep voice. I, I can make my voice sound like this. This voice is pretty much the staple for me when it comes to voice acting. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Click that eye to partner with Freedom and join the Freedom family so we can all grow together. You get many perks like position music, you also get epidemic sound, a lot of other access to royalty free videos, sponsorships, and many things to help you grow. Just click the links down there in the description below to get involved in our community, our forums, our Discord chat servers, meet our graphics team, meet our community team, all of that on Discord and the forums. What are you waiting for? Get started. And we will grow together as a family because this is the Freedom Family. You are part of it, we are all part of it, and we're all growing together. To get more George, click that big F. That will subscribe you to Freedom Central, home of The George Show. And PewDiePie gave one of you, Freedom Family, a big shout out. Click that video to see the shout out and to see our new 3D sets for you. And click that video to see what YouTube recommends you watch next.